Continuum mechanics is a branch of mechanics that deals with the analysis of the kinematics and the mechanical behavior of materials modeled as a continuous mass rather than as discrete particles. The French mathematician Augustin Louis Cauchy was the first to formulate such models in the 19th century. Research in the area continues today. Explanation Modeling an object as a continuum assumes that the substance of the object completely fills the space it occupies. Modeling objects in this way ignores the fact that matter is made of atoms, and so is not continuous. However, on length scales much greater than that of interatomic distances, such models are highly accurate. Fundamental physical laws such as the conservation of mass, the conservation of momentum, and the conservation of energy may be applied to such models to derive differential equations describing the behavior of such objects, and some information about the particular material studied is added through constitutive relations. Continuum mechanics deals with physical properties of solids and fluids which are independent of any particular coordinate system in which they are observed. These physical properties are then represented by tenses, which are mathematical objects that have the required property of being independent of coordinate system. These tenses can be expressed in coordinate systems for computational convenience. Concept of a continuum Materials, such as solids, liquids and gases, are composed of molecules separated by empty space. On a microscopic scale, materials have cracks and discontinuities. However, certain physical phenomena can be modeled assuming the materials exist as a continuum, meaning the matter in the body is continuously distributed and fills the entire region of space it occupies. A continuum is a body that can be continually subdivided into infinitesimal elements with properties being those of the bulk material. The validity of the continuum assumption may be verified by a theoretical analysis, in which either some clear periodicity is identified or statistical homogeneity and ergodicity of the microstructure exists. More specifically, the continuum hypothesis assumption hinges on the concepts of a representative volume element and separation of scales based on the Hill-Mandel condition. This condition provides a link between an experimentalist's and a theoretician's viewpoint on constitutive equations as well as a way of spatial in statistical averaging of the microstructure. When the separation of scales does not hold, or when one wants to establish a continuum of a finer resolution, resolution than that of the RVE size. One employs a statistical volume element, which, in turn, leads to random continuum fields. The latter then provide a micromechanics basis for stochastic finite elements. The levels of SVE and RVE link continuum mechanics to statistical mechanics. The RVE may be assessed only in a limited way via experimental testing when the constitutive response becomes spatially homogeneous. Specifically for fluids, the Knudsen number is used to assess to what extent the approximation of continuity can be made. Car traffic is an introductory example. Consider car traffic on a highway, with just one lane for simplicity. Somewhat surprisingly, and in a tribute to its effectiveness, Continuum mechanics effectively models the movement of cars via a partial differential equation for the density of cars. The familiarity of this situation empowers us to understand a little of the continuum discrete dichotomy underlying continuum modeling in general. To start modeling define that measure distance along the highway, is time, is the density of cars on the highway, and is the flow velocity of those cars, at, position. Conservation derives a PDE cars do not appear and disappear. Consider any group of cars, from the particular car at the back of the group located it to the particular car at the front located it the total number of cars in this group, since cars are conserved, but via the fundamental theorem of calculus this integral being zero holds for all groups, that is, for all intervals. The only way an integral can be zero for all intervals is if the integrand is zero for all. 
Consequently, conservation derives the first order nonlinear conservation PDE for all positions on the highway. This conservation PDE applies not only to car traffic but also to fluids, solids, crowds, animals, plants, bushfires, financial traders, and so on. Observation closes the problem this PDE is one equation with two unknowns, so we need another equation to form a well-posed problem. Such an extra equation is typically needed in continuum mechanics and typically comes from experiments. For car traffic it is well established that cars typically travel at a speed depending upon density. For some experimentally determined function that is a decreasing function of density. For example, experiments in the Lincoln Tunnel, New York, found that a good fit is obtained by. Thus the basic continuum model for car traffic is the PDE for the car density on the highway. Major areas of continuum mechanics. An additional area of continuum mechanics comprises elastomeric foams, which exhibit a curious hyperbolic stress-strain relationship. The elastomer is a true continuum, but a homogeneous distribution of voids gives it unusual properties. Formulation of models Continuum mechanics models begin by assigning a region in three-dimensional Euclidean space to the material body being modeled. The points within this region are called particles or material points. Different configurations or states of the body correspond to different regions in Euclidean space. The region corresponding to the body's configuration at time is labeled. A particular particle within the body in a particular configuration is characterized by a position vector where are the coordinate vectors in some frame of reference chosen for the problem. This vector can be expressed as a function of the particle position in some reference configuration. For example the configuration at the initial time, so that this function needs to have various properties so that the model makes physical sense. Needs to be continuous in time, so that the body changes in a way which is realistic, globally invertible at all times, so that the body cannot intersect itself, orientation preserving, as transformations which produce mirror reflections are not possible in nature, for the mathematical formulation of the model, is also assumed to be twice continuously differentiable so that differential equations describing the motion may be formulated. Forces in a continuum Continuum mechanics deals with deformable bodies, as opposed to rigid bodies. A solid is a deformable body that possesses shear strength, SC. A solid can support shear forces. Fluids, on the other hand, do not sustain shear forces. For the study of the mechanical behavior of solids and fluids these are assumed to be continuous bodies, which means that the matter fills the entire region of space it occupies, despite the fact that matter is made of atoms, has voids, and is discrete. Therefore, when continuum mechanics refers to a point or particle in a continuous body it does not describe a point in the interatomic space or an atomic particle, rather an idealized part of the body occupying that point. Following the classical dynamics of Newton and Euler, the motion of a material body is produced by the action of externally applied forces which are assumed to be of two kinds, surface forces and body forces. Thus, the total force applied to a body or to a portion of the body can be expressed as Surface forces or contact forces, expressed as force per unit area, can act either on the bounding surface of the body, as a result of mechanical contact with other bodies, or on imaginary internal surfaces that bound portions of the body, as a result of the mechanical interaction between the parts of the body to either side of the surface. When a body is acted upon by external contact forces, Internal contact forces are then transmitted from point to point inside the body to balance their action. According to Newton's second law of motion of conservation of linear momentum and angular momentum, the internal contact forces are related to the body's deformation through constitutive equations. The internal contact forces may be mathematically described by how they relate to the motion of the body, independent of the body's material makeup. 
the distribution of internal contact forces throughout the volume of the body is assumed to be continuous. Therefore, there exists a contact force density or Cauchy traction field that represents this distribution in a particular configuration of the body at a given time. It is not a vector field because it depends not only on the position of a particular material point, but also on the local orientation of the surface element as defined by its normal vector. Any differential area with normal vector of a given internal surface area, bounding a portion of the body, experiences a contact force arising from the contact between both portions of the body on each side of, and it is given by where is the surface traction, also called stress vector, traction, or traction vector. The stress vector is a frame and different vector. The total contact force on the particular internal surface is then expressed as the sum of the contact forces on all differential surfaces. In continuum mechanics a body is considered stress-free if the only forces present are those into atomic forces required to hold the body together, and to keep its shape in the absence of all external influences including gravitational attraction. Stress is generated during manufacture of the body to a specific configuration are also excluded when considering stresses in a body. Therefore, the stresses considered in continuum mechanics are only those produced by deformation of the body, SC. Only relative changes in stress are considered, not the absolute values of stress. Body forces are forces originating from sources outside of the body that act on the volume of the body. Saying that body forces are due to outside sources implies that the interaction between different parts of the body are manifested through the contact forces alone. These forces arise from the presence of the body in force fields, e.g., gravitational field or electromagnetic field, or from inertial forces when bodies are in motion. As the mass of a continuous body is assumed to be continuously distributed, any force originating from the mass is also continuously distributed. Thus, body forces are specified by vector fields which are assumed to be continuous over the entire volume of the body, i.e., acting on every point in it. Body forces are represented by a body force density, which is a frame and different vector field. In the case of gravitational forces, the intensity of the force depends on, or is proportional to, the mass density of the material, and it is specified in terms of force per unit mass. These two specifications are related through the material density by the equation. Similarly, the intensity of electromagnetic forces depends upon the strength of the electromagnetic field. The total body force applied to a continuous body is expressed as body forces and contact forces acting on the body lead to corresponding moments of force relative to a given point. Thus, the total applied talk about the origin is given by in certain situations, not commonly considered in the analysis of the mechanical behavior of materials, it becomes necessary to include two other types of forces. These are body moments and couple stresses. Body moments, or body couples, are moments per unit volume or per unit mass applied to the volume of the body. Couple stresses are moments per unit area applied on a surface. Both are important in the analysis of stress for a polarized dielectric solid under the action of an electric field. Materials where the molecular structure is taken into consideration, solids under the action of an external magnetic field, and the dislocation theory of metals. Materials that exhibit body couples and couple stresses in addition to moments produced exclusively by forces are called polar materials. Non-polar materials are then those materials with only moments of forces. In the classical branches of continuum mechanics the development of the theory of stresses is based on non-polar materials.